Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. And I want to let you know today that we have a guest who is absolutely incredible. He's built this amazing RV rental franchise business, and I cannot wait to get in touch with him and talk with him about this. And you're, maybe you're thinking, this is the Amazon Files. What does this have to do with building an R? the rental business stay tuned because you're going to find out about gar's story and how amazing it is and where the connection is to amazon e-commerce business all together but i promise you you are going to learn something in this episode it's just inspiring it's interesting it's different this is a different business model that's out there but it shows you that your idea your great idea or sometimes your biggest mistake can turn into an amazing business idea and once you have business experience in one business you get to bring that experience to something new so even if you do pivots if you change if you've been selling on amazon and you're looking for a change or you're thinking i want to pivot into some other business like when is this going to be when is how am i going to use my amazon business experience to maybe move into something different into the future or say okay maybe i'm burned out on this or this is not something that i'm used to anymore how can I make pivots and change and this episode is really going to inspire you to uh, just listen in and see how other people are doing these things and how you can do them as well so without further ado please welcome gar russell to the show so gar welcome to the show i'm so glad you're here yeah i am so excited to be here i love that title in the email mommy income yeah. that I saw. <laughs> yeah, I'm the mom making income and trying to teach other people how they can make income on their own terms. That's what we're here for. And I love, by the way, that like totally on brand and in context, you are literally broadcasting from an RV, which I absolutely love. So thank you for showing up in your true form. I love to um, see that with people that I talk to. So first and foremost, let's just, you are the founder and owner of uh, Fireside RV Rental, but I know that you didn't come out of the womb with that title. So can you tell us a little bit about who you were before you got into this, and then we'll get into the story about where you are today. Yeah, definitely. I've always been an entrepreneur all the way since fifth grade. When I went to my dad with my first business idea, and he thought I was crazy and lazy and just he wasn't an entrepreneur, he was a worker. And so I've start, started and scaled and sold several businesses. And like how life goes, you just a lot of your adventures, you just fall into them, like life circumstances. And so that's how I got into this before this business. Uh, my last business that I sold was a credit counseling business. Mm. And that business actually started because I gave my life to the Lord in 2003 and I had mm. really crappy credit. And so I had to learn to fix my credit. And that mm. turned into a credit counseling business that I owned for over 10 years. I published two books and did a bunch of cool stuff in the credit space. And uh, yeah, that's that was me, BC. Yeah, I love that. I love that you brought that up too, because I feel like our faith can play such a huge part. I'm a God girl myself. I love that we have that connection there. It can be so much different of how we make decisions going forward when we know that we have a different set of priorities when we are walking with the Lord. And I love that you did that. I did a very similar thing, although I didn't build a business on credit counseling. I actually took myself out of debt, like one thing at a time. The Dave Ramsey, but our own little version of that, just trying to get yeah. ourselves out of debt and be in the positive and just living within our means. And such a free experience, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really is. It was really interesting to walk through doing that and learning how to manage credit responsibly and finances responsibly and just be a good steward of my money and resources. And yeah, that was a, a sweet 10 years of my life and learned a lot through that. Definitely. For sure. So how do we bridge the gap between a credit counseling business and then getting into what you're doing now with the RVs? Like, how did that transpire? It's like one of my favorite quotes, life doesn't happen to you, life happens for you. Mm. So the same as God used my past mistakes to, you know, of creating horrible credit to learn how to fix credit and negotiate settlements and build positive credit and budget and all that stuff. This was the same deal. Life happened for me. I bought my wife a camper for our 10 year wedding anniversary. Like I thought, all right, I've got the perfect gift. We're going to go camping. She's going to love it. I bought this big bunkhouse model with all the bells and whistles and all the stuff. And, and you're a Michigander too. So you probably know Grand Haven, Michigan on I the West Grand Coast. Haven. One of my favorite places. Yeah. So we go to Grand Haven. I got the camper set up and there's the beach and the sun and the sand, all these things. I'm thinking like, sweet, like I am the best husband in the world and I picked out the perfect gift and I'm so amazing. 
And then my wife walks out of the camper and she's, oh yeah, I'm going home. And the way she said it was a little weird. I'm like, okay, like you're going home. Like you forgot something kind of question mark. She's no, I'm going home because I'm hot. I'm miserable. The sand. She just, I thought hated camping at the time, but really it was, she was seven months pregnant. So she was like miserable and she's going home. So I'm sitting there in my camping chair and all depressed and feeling bad for myself. And I'm like, crap. And I even got a payment. I just added a payment to our budget. And I'm like, all right, Lord, help me out here. And so literally within hours, I've got our camper up on Craigslist for rent. And literally within hours, I've got emails coming in. Hey, I want to rent your camper. We're going here in August. And hey, I want to rent your camper. And I'm like, oh, okay, here we go, God. And that was life happened for me. And yeah, fast forward to today, we've got, we're a franchise opportunity. Basically, we take other people's RVs and rent them out for them. And we just opened our 30th location that we have across the country. That is amazing. A pretty fell. Give me a timeline here. So yeah. the timeline from the seven months pregnant uh, camping <laughs> mistake. <laughs> I don't know what we call that. God can use all of our mistakes yeah. and all of our fumblings to turn it into something yeah. good, right? <laughs> like uh, you meant it for evil. We yeah. meant it for good. That's so funny. So give us a timeline yeah. from there to all these 30 franchises. Like when, how does that happen? Yeah, that was in July of 2016. Mm-hmm. is when that whole adventure started. And I'm an entrepreneur, so I moved quick. So literally right. two months later, she's having Isabella, our number four. All of our kids were born in C-sections. So it's very structured. Like you come, mm-hmm. you check in, you go to the room, C-section. Now you're in your room and you know the process, especially for C-section. So literally here we are two months later and I'm getting my wife and newborn into the room and I'm like, all right, love, I'll be right back. And she's like, all right, you'll be right. like her leaving me at the camper. I left her at the hospital. I'm like, all right, love, I'll be right back. She's like, be right back. Where are you going? I'm like, oh, I got to go sign papers. I just bought four more campers. <laughs> she's like, what? You bought four more campers? I'm like, yeah, honey, you see what this camper's doing? Like, I'm in the camper business now. I rent RVs is what I do. And so then it was just one thing after the next. And I've always, which I think a lot of entrepreneurs do, like a lot of entrepreneurs, like we're always like drawn like towards real estate. So I was purchasing real estate and that's had always been part of what I was doing. And so I thought I'm going to buy campers and rent them out. But yeah, it was funny. Like God, like literally right after that happened, God was like, no, it's OPRV. It's other people's RVs, like a conviction. Don't buy your own. No, it's, (laughs) yeah, it's not you buying a bunch of RVs, Gar. That's not the business model. It's other people's RVs. So I started reaching out to family and friends and Hey, I, You want me to rent your RV for you and this and that? And it was literally, so now we got five RVs, 10 RVs, 15 RVs. And then I was in a Facebook group, which you have, you how you have the peer to peer industry for everything. Heck, you can rent your, somebody's dog or pool or whatever you want nowadays. Yeah. And so I found these peer to peer groups for renting RVs and I'm joined their Facebook groups and I was sharing what I was doing. This guy in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in Evan Junction, right by Pitcher Rocks. He said, Hey, that's pretty cool. I want to do that. I was like, all right, why don't you be my first location? And so I basically just mentored him for free, showed him how to do it, continue to build my systems and processes and all that kind of stuff. And then it just went from there. I offered like a business in a box for 900, did that with several people. And then we continued to scale and add our first employee and stuff. And then next thing it's $5,000. And then a little over two years ago, God just put it heavy on my heart. You need to become a franchise. Like that's what's next. So I'll stop in case you want to ask me any questions because I could just keep talking and talking. So oh, I know. Anyway. I love it. I'm I'm leaning in. I think this is interesting. I do have a couple of questions. Like that. That was one of them. Is it like when did you decide that franchising was like the right opportunity at this point? Realizing that you're starting to build some of these networks, you're doing it yourself. You're renting them out instead of buying them yourself to rent out. So I love that move there. Leveraging anyone else's assets is way better than <laughs> digging in your own pockets. I mean, that's just from my experience (laughs) so just wondering like when did you decide to make that move to be like wow franchising is going to be the option here so that you're going to build this network of people renting these like all over the country yeah it was totally god because i really didn't want to do it like i started looking into it when god put it on my heart and it can cost six figures to do it it's a very long process a lot of documentation. You end up creating a franchise disclosure document, which can be several hundred pages long. And there's lawyers and all the stuff that I hate about business was <laughs> what had to be done to do this. And it was really God just like continually 
knocking on my heart. This is what's next. And honestly, I was very content. The business was on autopilot. I had staff in place. I had systems and processes. I really wasn't even hardly working at this point. We're traveling the country in our RV. We had did that for almost five years. We're traveling the country doing whatever we want. I check in with my staff maybe once a week. I mean, it was honestly what happened. It was the dream life, right? It's the dream life. It was the dream life. It was actually me being lazy too. In hindsight, I was not really stewarding what God had given to me. And I think the franchise vehicle, when he really pierced my heart, like you need to do this, is when I started pushing back in and leaning in and doing all that. Literally, I had franchisees that I'd maybe never even talk to that were part of the company now. And they're like, oh, wow, Gar, who's Gar? Like I'm back in the company and in the mix and doing things. And yeah, so it was the Lord and it was, yeah, it was quite a process. There's many stories that come out of that. That's interesting because I, I do believe that wholeheartedly in my own life and my own walk with the Lord. And he really doesn't allow us to stay comfortable long. He does. He stretches us outside of our comfort zone. Like you said, everything, like when you start talking about lawyers and 200 page documents, I'm like, oh, I hate those. But we get to the point where we are comfortable and we think we're good. And God, oh, I have something bigger for you to do. When we're faithful in a little, he gives us so much more. And I think that new levels, new devils, though, also brings problems and hiccups and biggest mistakes. So let's just be honest. I'm an honest, vulnerable, authentic kind of person. Like I like to talk about how I stumble so that other people people don't have to stumble in the same way. So when you come to thinking back and some building the stuff and the processes and the franchises and all this stuff, what do you feel like one of the biggest like mistake fall on your face mistake that you're like, wow, don't ever do that again. Yeah. I like you, Kristen. I think we're about to shed tears together here in a second. Okay. <laughs> because I definitely did. When I got lazy, a lot of this happened right during COVID. The world shut down. I'm an extrovert, right? So like, all these things happen. My wife and I actually started, we always have had drinks here and there and stuff like that, but we actually got into drinking like very heavy and we didn't even realize it because we were still being responsible. I wouldn't be drinking and driving. I wouldn't beat my kids, like all the things that I could say to justify. Mm -hmm. I had all those excuses, but I got really lazy. I, we were drinking, partying a bunch. I lost the grip on my finances for my business, we ended up losing over a quarter million dollars. Mm. And and literally God just, just woke me up one day. It was March 17th last year was when we had, when we stopped drinking. And, and shortly after that, I actually, I got COVID and it was all like in my head, the COVID, like I was having nightmares and tears and literally Kristen, like real raw vulnerable. I woke up in the middle of the night one night and I'm like, honey, you need to take my gun and you need to hide it because I'm having suicidal thoughts. Hmm. I'm like, I am scared. Like, I'm like, I, we've lost all this money. I'm I'm like, I don't know what we're going to do. I had to fire my right hand person that had been with me for about four years. I did a horrible job of firing her. Like I did it through text while I was all messed up with COVID and I totally ruined that relationship. I mean, it, man, it was ugly. There was, mm -hmm. and, uh, and literally it was just one foot in front of the, another. It, actually just yesterday, my wife and I are sitting to dinner last night and God speaks to me and he's, it's time for you to create a new playlist is what mm -hmm. he told me on my Amazon music. He says, the playlist you have is it was a warrior playlist. You were doing spiritual battle. You were getting yourselves out of the depths of depression and all the things you were going through. And he just said, you're through that now. Now it's time to create a new playlist. And oh my gosh, Kristen, it's been, especially the last week or so, it has been just mountaintop with the Lord and just being used by him and being able to encourage. I mean, even through this, because like you say, real, raw, vulnerable, mm -hmm. I've been like that through this whole thing. I've always been like that. Like my wife will tell me sometimes, shut up. Like, <laughs> You shouldn't be saying this right now in front of the kids. I think our spouses could have some, some, what I call like the second entrepreneur, the entrepreneurial spouse, like conversations. Uh -huh. We seem like we're very kindred spirits there. You know, as oh, far yeah. as just like him telling you, you don't have to say everything all the time to everyone. Yeah. What do you mean? And we really, yeah. <laughs> and that's something God's really convinced me of recently. And I feel like there's a huge move happening of the Lord right now. He's trying to wake a lot of people up from like a, they're still in a slumber from COVID. Mm -hmm. There's entrepreneurs that lost their businesses. 
that are scared to death to try again. There's so much damage that happened during that time. And there's people that are sleeping. And I feel like God is one of my callings is to help wake up Christian entrepreneurs and say, Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be with me. I just published a, a book a little bit ago called my real estate story. And it talks about from lawnmowers to RVs because my first business with lawnmowers in fifth grade, those got wheels on them. Now I'm in doing RVs. Those got wheels on them. But it's really the book is all about encouraging Christian entrepreneurs or what I call entrepreneurs. To rise up, take the chance, take yeah. the risk, fall on your face, learn from your mistake, go again. Like, anyway, I tell you what, that's so that's so interesting. I, I pick a word of the year every year and I'm so in alignment with what you're saying. The year this year was restoration. I will tell you mm. that 2023 was probably one of my worst years on record as a business, as like everything. It's just like when you, I don't know if that's a COVID thing. I don't, I can't even, I don't put my finger on it. I just know it's an enemy thing. And there was just a whole horrible hard year where the enemy wanted to steal everything I had. And a lot of it was stolen. I, and, and I love what the alignment we have here about the laziness. I'll be honest. Like uh, there was a time where like I was coasting and everything was so good and everything was just like coming in and the wheels were turning and I got lazy and I let go of some of the ropes, not in faith that like we got this but let go of the ropes because I was like oh we can breathe a little easier we have a little bit of this we have everything in place it was like not necessarily a sense of arrogance but just like a time of comfort and peace and just okay here we are but what I realized yeah. is that when that comes with business sometimes other things are suffering in the meantime it's just like you have to there's balance to me is a myth there's no such thing as balance we have to just give sometimes our family needs much more priority than business sometimes it's the opposite we work in together But I love how you said that. If we're just honest about where we came from and what what kind of mistakes we made and what we did, restoration is always possible. No matter what, that relationship you talked about. Yeah, I've had some where I've cut the cord and pulled the plug in ways that I'm not proud of, but God can restore anything. And not only that, he is bigger than anything that we can even imagine. And he wants us to be bigger and rely on him and trust him. And sometimes the time we can't rely and trust in him when we're not struggling. And I think some of yeah. the, and whether that some people have this financial struggle or a health struggle, or we all go through all of those things in different relationships and parenting, let's not even get me started there. <laughs> I have mm-hmm. a couple of grown, my, my older kids are 23, uh, 23 and 20 and then I I have a 13 year old so we're still in that wave there and just staying faithful and staying needy to be honest that's really what it is staying needy when we think we have enough money in the bank and we think this is going there and we're coasting along that should be a really big red flag to be like okay where is my where is really my hope and my help here and yeah we feel like we don't need help we're not calling on help and those lives happen for us in those ways as well is that what we might see in the moment as a mistake and a huge crash and a huge fall is actually the beginning of the ascent of another mountain that we can be on top of at this point so yes to 2024 so far i've been praying and asking for restoration and even since january Mm. 1st that has been showing up in so many ways wow yeah okay another question i have is we talked about those biggest mistakes and those are you know hard and we overcame and like you said we're through them but what about those breakthrough moments i know you had to have a breakthrough moment where you just sat back i call them pinch me moments where i sit here and be like is this real? Is this happening to me? Is this really what's mm. going on in this breakthrough? So tell me a little bit about one of those kind of moments where you thought, gosh, this is more than I could even ask or think. Yeah. Honestly, it's interesting. It's almost like the less I focus on my business and the more I focus on my ministry inside of the business, the more that the breakthrough is coming. And, and, it's, it, and God has really shown me that about the last six months that my messaging was to Christian entrepreneurs. That's my calling. That's who I'm called to serve. And so I, it's just crazy because it seems like I'm working less because I'm flowing in the gifting that God has me in, that God has given me. And then the business is actually taking care of itself. As a business owner, it's so easy to get drudged down with, I need to do this and I need to do that. And I can't hire that out. And I've got to do this and keep overhead down and on. But actually, when you're flowing in what you're appointed to do, then that's when the breakthrough happens. I mean, literally, in October, we had 10 franchises sign up. And part of it was my messaging of calling to Christian entrepreneurs. I actually had a marketing company tell me, like, 
hey, you need to remove all the Christian stuff out of it and just focus on this part of it. And that's going to get to the right people. But God was convicting me like, no, you're not served to, called to serve. And as business owners, you know, especially when money's tight, we want to try and serve everybody because we want to bring in as much sales and revenue as we can. But that's not our audience. That's not who we're called to serve. And then when we have those people in our pipeline, they're driving us crazy. They're the most work and the least amount of pay. So yeah, that's really just been, which is funny because God showed me I had that same breakthrough with my credit counseling business, but I didn't have the revelation of it. It's really that's interesting what was happening. That, that you say that too, because I have a similar story where rising and growing and having some really positive, not just financially, but just like overall, like I feel like, wow, I've hit this mark and giving glory to God in that moment, but not actually, like you said, not the revelation, the aha of here's the connection. And really what God brought to mind in those things that, that has changed since then was seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. And that's exactly what you're testifying right now is that when you started to really hone in on who God wants you to serve and not all the busy day to day, I got to do this and make this decision and do all that. But if we're seeking first who and what God wants us to serve and operating in our acknowledging, accepting and growing our true gifts that we have, because guess what? We don't have all the gifts. All of us don't all have all the gifts. You're not good at everything. Those of you guys that are listening, I'm safe for the people in the back. Like we are not good at everything and we never will be as entrepreneurs. We need to hire our weaknesses and lean into our strengths. And the thing is, is that if we're not seeking first God's kingdom, it's not going to have that breakthrough, that peaceful feeling that we have when we're like, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. You don't feel, I mean, there's always stress and there's our to-do list is longer than we want it to be. But at the end of the day, if you're having peace, knowing I did what I'm called to do, I'm stepping in my gifts and I'm serving and loving the best way I can. I think some of the other stuff just doesn't seem to matter. He adds all that because what we first and foremost need is that that spiritual boost. Yeah, that brings a, up a great point of one of my breakthroughs was I was at a market conference in Orlando a little over a year ago and um, they were teaching about how every business has two pieces it has an attractive character and it has an operator and I was the attractive character of my business I was the face the talker all that kind of, right the sales team but I needed an operator mm. and so I found an operator that I brought in as a part, a business partner. And that was a huge breakthrough for me of getting things organized and systematized and having somebody to say, all right, guard, those are great ideas, but we're focusing on this right now. And, and reigning in the yeah, school, so right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's been a huge blessing uh, to get that revelation and business owner like, oh my gosh, equity, don't give up equity. I'd rather have a portion of a whole lot than all of nothing. And so finding that business partner was pivotal as well. That is, that's amazing. I love that. That was good. That leads me, you said pivotal. And I was like, oh my gosh, that leads to right to my next question of talking about pivots. And I know you mentioned your pivot from having a credit card counseling business and then moving into the RVs, but when you mentioned even one pivot so far of renting your own versus kind of this bigger business model where let's get everybody to sign up and rent their RVs. What are some other pivots that you feel like you've made that were really, I know you mentioned hiring somebody, other operations that have really helped you to be like, wow, this was a great pivot pivot and maybe one that was not so great. Yeah. I think the best pivots that we continue to have are just on like system systemization and documentation. We created what we call the fireside fast track framework. So it's an online class. It's eight modules. It's got videos and PDFs and checklists and all this cool stuff. So putting certain things like that in place that as a business owner, we don't take enough time to document what we're doing, the files, and to make something where it's actually scalable. Heck, most business owners out there, you, you don't even have a database where you could just go in and grab your contacts and say, I want to do an email blast or I want to do a mailer blast or whatever. So it's really focusing on those certain things. So we took three months and we built out our Fireside Fast Track framework. In it, and then we continue to constantly add to that. So we do like bi-weekly coaching calls with our franchisees. And we're not just talking business, we're talking mindset, and mentorship and faith and family. And that was one of the, I got it on a post-it back in my office that God just nailed into my head about a month ago. I'm constantly in some sort of course. This I was just in this, finishing up this course called Wealth with God by Jim Baker, phenomenal course. And 
God was showing me as I was in that course, he's people want to be part of a community. That's what people long for. People long to be part of a tribe. Yes. And so that was something we did. We we took a minute and we're like, okay, what's our tribe? And we used chat GTP and some other stuff. We're like, we're fire starters. That's mm-hmm. what we are. And we're like, okay, what is a fire starter? And we came up with our ma- mantra. A fire starter is someone who doesn't bring a spark, but a flame to everything they do, to their community, to their family, to the church. We just built out our company culture, which to me was like mind blowing, but you go to a worldwide brand or corporation to them. That's like everyday business. That's what you do. You build a culture, you build a tribe, you build a community, you build training, you document. It's interesting you you say that. I I had another question that we skipped earlier because I was just steamrolling here and it's great, but I was going to ask you, do you have any sort of formal corporate training at all? College background, like other things like that. I will tell you from me, like I went from high school to married right away and having a few kids. I had a couple of years of college, but they kicked me out because they were just like, you don't have a major. You can't come back until you figure out what you're going to do with your life. And I'm like, there's nothing here for me. So I'll figure it out. And obviously I figured it out, (laughs) but just wondering about that because I I also did not have any sort of corporate background, any sort of any business training whatsoever. It was just like me and God and doing things, just taking risks. I have, I'm not very risk averse. I'm willing to, I'm just not very scared. I'm like, I know things are going to happen. Things are not always going to go perfectly, but like, I'm willing to take risks and that needs to be part of entrepreneurship. As I get a little bit older, <laughs> that gets a little less, like I'm a little bit more like closer to this end than that end. And so I'm like, ah, oh, well, my risks are a little bit uh, more manageable mm-hmm. at this point, but I'm not scared to dive in and, and go for it. And it sounds like that, but like coming from that background, do you have any sort of experience that you brought to the table with that? Or was that like school of hard knocks like me? It's the same as you. I was expelled uh, from school in 10th grade. It's so interesting with entrepreneurship, especially entrepreneurship is all these college courses that they have on entrepreneurship and sales and marketing and this and that. It'd be interesting to know the percentage of people that actually go through that, get a degree, and then actually end up starting their own business. I, yeah. I would be very confident to say 90% of them are actually working for an entrepreneur. And that entrepreneur is 10 years younger than them and is has this, no formal training because I really feel like entrepreneurship is something that you, you're born with. Like you are created because there are certain characteristics that come along with that. Like you said, taking risk, right? Stepping out in faith, doing something that doesn't make sense, not knowing the outcome. I mean, and that's some of the the greatest entrepreneurs of this country realized that, capitalized on that, and they created colleges yeah. and they created schools to train employees. Yeah. But you look at the top 1% wealthy, that's what they do. They train people to become an employee. Mm-hmm. So to go to college, to come out and be a successful entrepreneur, unless this would be the caveat to that would be if you come from a family of entrepreneurs and you're getting ready to step into the family businesses, mm-hmm. then maybe they might pay for you to go to Harvard or this or that to get the degree and whatever. But yeah, most entrepreneurship is something that you're born with it and then you grow in it. When I was listening to this podcast yesterday by one of one of my mentors, Myron Golden, and he says, sorry, I'm name dropping. I just, that's something God's been convicting me of. Like when you get something from somebody, you give that person credit. And that's something that he taught me is it's so funny how we've got kids that are going to college to pursue some sort of career when their family actually owns a successful business. They could be part of that business, actually come up and learn all the things they need to learn in that business. And then say they have an idea to start a business. Guess what? Mom and dad's business could actually be the bank and fund you to start your business of where God has you called. It, I think it was that's a really amazing. Cool I do have a... Like I have a story about that that I find is interesting because I think it's circling the wagon about that. One of my best friends, she was my big business partner for a time, still my bestie till this day. We do separate businesses now, but we were partnerships for a while and her parents were entrepreneurs. And she said growing up, there was such a, a, a roller coaster of the ups and the downs and the all the kinds of different businesses and things that she wanted nothing to do with that life when she went to college. She was just like, I do not want what my parents had. They just struggled so much and not necessarily financially 
financially, just like all of the stress, all the decisions, all the everything, she saw that from the outsider perspective. And I believe she had somewhat of an opportunity to maybe be a little bit in the family business. And she, at that point was like, I want nothing to do with it. I feel like a lot of children who raised up, there's usually one, depending on how many you have, I guess, but there's usually one or two that are like, okay, we totally on board. They have those genes, right? They have that entrepreneurial yeah. spirit. They're born with it. And then others are just like, oh, that's not for me. So event circle back to that. She went to college. She got a, a job. She worked for a horrible boss that was super rude and just didn't take any of her ideas into consideration and all this kind of stuff. And then she realized at that point with having, she was let go at eight months pregnant and this whole thing. And while she was off for her maternity leave, she realized like maybe my parents were right. Like after going to college for four years and having this job for a few years and she's, they don't respect my ideas. They don't, she had the entrepreneurial spirit. It just took her a while to come back to come back home. Like that product, the prodigal son kind of thing of just let me go and see what yeah. the rest of the world is like. And then now she's been an entrepreneur since then, since she had her son and then realized I can't go back into the workforce. I can't have everybody else telling me what to do and that my ideas are crap and this and that. She goes, I'll figure this out. And although she didn't go into the same vein as her parents did, she carved out her own niche and played with a lot of different things uh, and then realized I absolutely am an entrepreneur. I just needed to go the other way around to see what the other side of the world looked like to where I was taught in my life. I grew up with a single in a single parent home. It was just actually my dad and my sister and I, and he was one of those that was just like, keep your head down, lay low, go to college, get a good job. Don't be like me, blue collar, and just always struggle. Keep it simple. There's better for you out there. And that never hit home for me, even though he would say that, oh, you gotta, he wasn't hammered on good grades. He always said, do your best. And he was a man of faith as well, but it was all about the simple life. And he always wanted me. I was the one, I'm going to go to college and get this big, mm -hmm. great job mm -hmm. and whatever. And there was definitely some disappointment there when I took a different track a bit. I mean, I tried the college thing and I was just like, they, this is not for me. There's no amount of training that can teach me what I want to know. I'm very hands on. I'm like, just show me what to do. Let me mess around with it. And I'm going to mess up a bunch of times, but I'm going to like learn from that. I'm just definitely want to yeah. get my hands dirty and do it. So there's just, there's always tracks out there. And I, like I always said, when you're an adult, you can unsubscribe from anything that you were taught when you were a kid, if you want to take the good, get rid of the bad, unsubscribe, be like, okay, right. that's for you. It's not for me. Yeah. And eventually I showed him that there was a little bit before he passed away, I was able to show him a little bit of, I can carve out my own way here and with God's help yeah. um, just constantly doing that my values when I was starting out was I started on eBay that was really my first before my first official I did I sold candy I sold clothes when I was in high school like to my friends and things like that like I always I, we just didn't have a lot of money so I always figured out a way to get more <laughs> I'm like okay if I hoard some of this and I only buy this much school clothes and I can take the rest of the money and do something else so I used to buy and sell and trade stuff all the time and like you said it's just natural it came natural to me to be able to do that yeah this is to be able to say, hey, I can, where there's a will, there's a way, and I will make a way if there isn't one. And I think that's the vein of entrepreneurship that we have. Plus when we, I mean, I think without God, all things are possible. There's, he always asks us to do things that don't make sense. They're like, why would I do that? Why would I close the doors over here when I don't know what's yeah. next? And he's okay. just, I got you, it's going to be okay. So that trust is really important there. So I know this has been such a great conversation in so many ways. The, steer, the ship has steered in a couple of different directions, which I love. And so just following up here, where can people go to find out more about you and your training and your business and your business model and not just if they're interested in renting out their own rv but perhaps someone pivoting into a franchise that they may be optional for them where can they find you yeah if you go to firesidervrental.com you can see our rvs for rent you can get more information if you want us to rent your rv out for you you can learn about our franchise opportunity so that's probably a really good starting point is to go there Awesome. That is such an amazing thing. I just love what you guys are doing there and how we think small, but God has this bigger plan for us. And all we have to do is take those steps and step into that faith and yeah. just be obedient. I mean, that's a word that no one likes to use in 2024. These days, this generation, they're like, yeah. obedient? Obey who? And no one likes that word. But the reality is, it's when someone loves you and they care for you and they want the absolute best for you, it's really easy to do what they say. If you know that yeah. and you feel that and you understand that, it's not hard to say, okay, I think this is what's best for you. Please follow this obeying. I feel like it's a lot easier when you know it comes from a place of, I love you. I care for mm -hmm. you. I want what's best for you. And I see yeah. things that you don't see. And so I think that's just, it's amazing how you've just followed God's word and his plan. And thank you so much for coming and being so vulnerable and honest yeah. about all the things. That inspires me for people to just tell their stories and to testify what God is doing and mm -hmm. about some of their own 
mistakes and the things that they can course correct. And there's always another hilltop in a valley and we just keep doing that until we go on home. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about that last time. My wife and I, there's hills and valleys, but we, the Bible says we go from glory to glory. So we're mm -hmm. constantly moving upward in him. So well, again, thank you so, so much for coming. Thank yeah. you for your time and energy. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. So thank you so much for coming to the Amazon Files podcast. Y'all, I'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.